it's a little sticky, the controls. You have to just be careful. Okay, so it's recording now? Yes, ma'am. All right. And you, you just want to make sure everyone can hear you. Okay. Can we get... Hi, everyone. Can someone um, just maybe type in the chat if you can hear us? How's the audio? Please. Yes. Okay. Yay. Okay. Thank you so and much for your music that you need yes. to do. She's, so she's hooked up. I can I'm help you with that, that okay? Yeah. I think I'm, I think I'm good. So, okay, great. Thank you. We're good. Well, I'm going to bring this. When you get the laptop, I'm going to All right, so we are surviving um, a series of unfortunate events. <laughs> um, welcome, everyone. I'm going to try to do this. Really quickly, I'm going to wheel you around a little bit. We are in the lovely dance studio 204 in the Center for Performing Arts at PGCC. Uh, my name is Ieli Ichile. <laughs> um, Get into it. And I'm the director of the African American Studies Institute here at PG Community College. We have um, a wonderful treat for you this evening. Thank you so much for your patience. This is the second installment of the Fall 2022 Black Culture Matters series. Um, our first series with, was, was uh, in September with Dr. Dr. Keto Swan. We have the privilege of having Lucina Martin with us, Mama Lucina, who is a world-renowned African dancer. She traditionally um, teaches both song and dance from many parts of the continent um, and is also a brilliant scholar in her own right. Um, she is going to be doing a, a lecture and demonstration. She has um, also got some students here from PGCC, from some local uh, dance companies who will be physically moving with us in the space. If you have some you know, ability to get up and move, you're wearing comfortable clothes, carve out a little space for yourself and please join in. Yeah, I do need to take a breath. Whew. I need to go scream somewhere. In any case, <laughs> um, really quickly, I wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, Mama Lucina and then a little bit about the African American Studies Institute and then we'll, we'll run through. All right, so you all are joined this evening by Lucina Martin, um, who is a native of Detroit, Michigan. She graduated from Howard University in 2003 with a BA in African Studies. While there, she co-founded the INSA Dance Ensemble, the university's first campus organization for African dance and, tr and drumming. This is where I met Mama Lucina. Also during her time at Howard University, she joined Farafina Khan under the direction of Mahiri Keita Edwards, son and protege of Mama Di Keita. In 2004, she appeared on Mustafa Bangura's instructional video series, Tinkanyi. Um, and for 10 years, she taught outreach throughout the DC area with traditional expressions, um, she is a full-time classroom social studies teacher since 2014. She is now a teaching artist and co-director of Farafina Khan Junior Company. Um, she has traveled to many parts of West Africa for uh, several occasions to study traditional folkloric dance, folklore, history, art, song, everything, from Guinea to Senegal to Gambia to Ghana to Cote d'Ivoire. She's been everywhere. Um, she endeavors to continue this mission of hers, uh, which is working with the community and her fellow educators to increase awareness of African cultural heritage. She is an expert, that's it. To having access to her without paying lots of money is a privilege. I'm so happy to have her here for all of us. Um, and she is helping us tonight to fulfill the mission of the African American Studies Institute at PGCC. So really quickly, I wanna read you what our mission statement is. Um, so we can kind of, get with uh, the program. So the Prince George's Community College African American Studies Institute um, is here to facilitate the critical study of the realities and possibilities of people of African descent, both in and beyond Prince George's County and the learning community in this county. Um, the primary goal of the AASI is to create spaces in which black life ways are affirmed, justice is a top priority and healthy futures for African people are envisioned. All right, so yeah, I know. I'm, I'm just trying to be cognizant of time. Um, thank you for the encouragement to breathe. Um, I'm gonna sit down and breathe and I'm gonna give my, uh, my time, all my attention and all of yours over to Mama Lucina. Welcome. Hello everyone, hi everybody. <laughs> okay, so we've been here and actually, um, bless us all, we've been in the space 
for plenty of time. We've been looking at each other and I've been really excited and eager to get everybody up and get ready to get started. Um, you all are welcome. Uh, I'm sure uh, Yeli already showed you the, the room and the space. So I'm, I'm shifting my attention here and here. This hybrid life is really interesting, but we are gonna do our best and we're gonna have a good time. So I'm also going to be adjusting my camera because as it stands, you cannot see my legs and feet and that's the key. These are the keys, the keys to the kingdom right now. But without uh, any further ado, I wanna get started just about what our talk is on for today, okay? So I'm gonna bring my little, um, my new little notes here to make sure that I stay on task. It's really to make me talk less. Otherwise, <laughs> I would be running off at the mouth for two or three hours and, and everything. But so, today we are working with, and it's a, a neat little title, the nitty gritty. Okay, so when we talk about nitty gritty, we're talking about the details. We're talking about kind of getting into what it is that makes our expression of dance, our expression of body, our expression of our lives, African, okay? And that is too big and too broad of a subject for me to really touch on even all the things that I know, which is a tiny, tiny drop in the bucket in comparison to what there really is to know. The Black experience is humongous. It expands throughout the entire continent of Africa and across a diaspora that goes around the entire world. So black dance is just too broad for us to even fathom. But what we are gonna do today is get into a little bit of what we are being commonly inundated with, what we're seeing on our timelines and our social media, what's happening on TikTok, what the young folks are doing, um, and we want to, I, I want to take an opportunity to look at and try to help everybody see some connections between what's popular now and today and how we can make some linkages to what is actually still today being traditionally done on the continent of Africa. A lot of people, when we talk about black dance and we talk about African dance, we talk about it from a place of something that is old, something that used to be done, something that went like this before all of a sudden, apparently 100% of the Africans were brought over here for slavery and all of them landed here in the United States. That's not true, <laughs> okay? So it, it's not as if African culture stopped the moment people began to uh, be taken away or leave for whichever reasons from the continent of Africa. We are still all experiencing this thing together, okay? And with the advent of the globalization, the level of globalization that's going on now, everybody has access, access to everybody. You know, everyone has access to everyone's culture, to everyone's trends, to everyone's popular things, music and, and dance and movement. All of these things are all becoming more and more interconnected. And the beautiful, beautiful thing that's happening too is that we're getting African contemporary dance over here in the United States. And there's influence going both ways. There's influence going all different directions. I'm seeing hip hop inspired dance in India. I'm seeing African inspired dance in Japan. I'm like, all of these things are happening all at the same time, all today. So I wanna ask, I wanna throw out a question to you all in the room to really just get us started and get some, some feedback. And those of you um, who are online with us, please, by all means, let's um, type your responses in the chat. I want to know, why do people dance? Like, what are some of the, the reasons or the occasions for when dance might happen in a group? Go ahead. Because of music. Yeah, you hear music, you feel music, and something makes your body... Nothing you can do, but you gotta move, right? Just because you hear music and you feel a beat, and that music can come from a whole lot of different sources, not just uh, something electronic or something mechanical, not just a drum. That music can come from nature. That music can come from the sound of birds singing. That music can come from the water in a stream. That music can come from a, a tree that may have fallen down and something is knocking up against 
that truth. And you hear it and you feel it and, and all of these things combine and connect, all right? So definitely any type of rhythmic sound can lead us into dancing. Someone on the chat says, mourning. Someone says, commemorating a rite of passage. I saw, I saw your hand, I'm a, I was gonna say like celebration. Celebration, absolutely, absolutely. And there's times when we actually just feel compelled, and we're gonna actually get into that when we talk about the gritty. You feel compelled just because you did something good to get up, to do something, to celebrate. That can become a thing that now people catch on to, people like it, people learn it, people exchange it, and now you have a whole tradition. You have a whole tradition that's just based on one day somebody got happy. Somebody felt good about where they were in a, in a particular moment in life, and there we go. All right, your hand was up. People dance to express themselves, absolutely. So when you may be feeling a certain emotion that might not always be joy, you might feel sadness. And uh, that brings me back to celebrations that happen in mourning. I said celebrations, and yes, we're celebrating life, but at the same time, we're in mourning, right? You could be, um, you could be anxious, and you might need to just move to get it out. I don't know if anybody here watches Grey's Anatomy. I'm a fan of Grey's Anatomy. In the earlier, right? In the earlier seasons, Christine Yang was on there, her and Meredith, when things would get too crazy and too bad, too difficult to handle, Lord knows, Shondaland has all the drama, right? Too much drama in their life. When it's too heavy, they would just be like, forget everything, we're gonna dance it out. And they would just get in the living room and they would just go dance. They just dance together with each other. The two of these sisters just expressing that energy and getting it out. Okay, so thank y'all for that. Um, I'm also uh, admitting people as they're able to come in. I'm so excited. And yeah, again, just releasing that energy. So there's lots of reasons to dance. And throughout the course of humanity, all of them have come to the surface. All of them have been reasons why we dance. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's a thing. All right. So, as we were saying, yes, people dance to attract attention and channel divine spirits. Spiritual dance, again, a whole nother day. Spiritual dance is a whole day, whole day. We can get into a lot of that. All right, yes, Zoom bombing is still a thing. It's unfortunate, but it's okay. People are in here doing all kinds of things with their lives. I hope that person makes better choices later. But here we go. <laughs> all right, so I wanna talk really briefly about the history of, now let's, let's bring it in, right? We, we talked about all of humanity. We're gonna bring it in a little bit. Black dance in America, okay? And if I start naming stuff and getting specific, it's a whole nother day. Like I said, we don't have 10 days to do this. So just really quickly, we know that tap, originated in the United States. And it's based in a combination of African movement and um, Irish dance and some other influences too that had to do with the, the life experiences of people who were um, enslaved and post-slavery, uh, things like that. You got Lindy Hop, you got Swing, you've got Jazz. You have all of these different genres of music and of dance that developed out of social settings, that developed out of people really just gathering along and getting together with each other, right? Um, and of course, eventually, a lot of them end up on stage, end up being presented, maybe even in films, movies, things like that. There's also the side of dance that is developed for the sake of art. You have dance that is created and developed for the stage specifically. Couple names pop up for me, Josephine Baker, Catherine Dunham, Pro Primus, these are innovators. These are people who took African styles of movement and put them into what was becoming modern dance forms. And again, the names list is way too long. It's way too long. I just want to throw a couple out there because I want us to dance today too. I do. All right. So, um, but I want you to just kind of have that, that sense that we develop either out of our social settings or specifically for the purpose of art right, for stage. And sometimes, a lot of times, those things combine. Those things that were born in the social setting end up getting developed and ramped up for the purpose of presentation on stage. 
and with African dance, a lot of that has gone on too. All right, so the other thing that I wanna bring up, now we're almost there, y'all, is hip hop. The other thing that we wanna get into is hip hop. So another whole day, another whole month, year. There's so many courses, so many genres, so many branches that have developed from the original beginnings of hip hop back in the late 80s, if I'm not lying to you, <laughs> in New York, right? There's a whole culture that is based on hip hop and there's a whole influential status that hip hop holds all around the world, okay? And so with that, I want us to look a little bit forward into the past decade or so, the past 10 years or so, because even in my generation, and I'll let y'all guess my age, no, no, no cheating if you already know it in the chat. I'll let y'all guess my age, but in my generation, um, we had, you know, we, we were experiencing those, those earlier days of hip hop. There was a lot of different dances going on. I'm from Detroit, but I know that um, Dr. Ichile already said that. And in Detroit, we had a whole lot of dances that you might have had in common with other places. But one of the things that we did was school craft, right? <laughs> Right? So there's all kinds. Oh my god, cabbage patch. Don't let me get started. Somebody give me a uh somebody give me an old 80s dance. Somebody come on, turn your camera on and show us an old dance from the, the late 80s, the early 90s. What y'all got? Name some, name some. If you can name it, I might be able Oh Roger Rabbit! Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, so you might have to show it. Janina, you might have to show me the Roger Rabbit. I don't remember it good. The tramp, ooh, y'all better come on these cameras. Y'all better come on these cameras and show me some of these. Y'all talking about, see, these these my people in here. I know y'all. Uh-huh. Holding a sleeping baby. What kind of dance is that? Was the Roger Rabbit the one that went backwards? Is that this one? Don't, don't have me lying. There were two Roger Rabbits, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, okay, yes. Yeah. See, I'm getting it. The WAP. Oh, wait a minute. The WAP might be before my time. I feel like. Somebody show me the walk. Oh. Okay. All right. And not every dance had a name. Not every dance had a name either. But, yes, running man. Come on. That's official. Don't y'all got a new running man? Y'all got something. Y'all called the running man. And I was like, what is that? What are y'all doing? Something. Somebody show me. No, y'all can show it to me. We, that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. What it go? What it do? Yeah. <laughs> One leg in front of the other. Oh. And you just kind of go like that. I'm not good at it. It's okay. I teach high school. My kids just laughed at me when I tried, and it's all right. But um, Can they see your feet? Should I have pulled the? I need to. I need something to like post up behind here so that I can bring it down. Tambourine. I don't know if the tambourine. Will tambourine do it. life. Is it not tall? The tambourine might not do it. <laughs> okay. But we're gonna see. Hold on. Let's see. On, if I step on. back far enough, because I think at least y'all can hear me. There's a couple of possibilities. So while she works that out. I'm gonna give us some music. I'm gonna see if y'all know what this is. Ooh, that seems. Good. Y'all know what we getting to? Y'all know what we about to do? Y'all know what we about to do, right? The guy who came up with it, his, he's on um, all socials, Juby 2 Fi, J-U-B-I, let me see, can I type that in, J-U-B-I-2-F-Y-E. We about to do it. So if you don't know how to do it yet, hopefully when you leave here, you'll be able to do it. <laughs> all right, Juby 2 Fi, right? So his name is Juberson Joseph. I did my research, y'all. His name is Juberson Joseph. And he said that he was hanging out. He's got, and if you look on his pages, he's got 
just a bunch of reels and whatnot of him and his friends just doing popular dances, right? And so him and his friends were, were dancing, were jamming, were having a good time, and he thought about the drum majors in HBCUs. Yeah, y'all ever seen the drum majors march? When they march, they have the high knees, right? And he thought about those high knees. He thought about all of that, and he brought it, and he said, you know what? What if I put my foot out? Y'all can see me better in the mirror. I know y'all can at least see my feet in the mirror. What if I put my foot out, right? And when I bring it in, I bring the other foot in. Put that foot out, bring it in, and make it straight. Y'all try this. Try this with me. Try this with me. We're going to get this today, y'all. We're going to get it. All the times you tried it, and you was like, oh, dang, I can't figure it out. So you take one foot, put it out in front of you. Mm -hmm. When you slide it towards your body, you're going to pop up your other knee like that. Put it under you and pop up your other knee. We need high knees. And I'm from marching band. I had a marching band background. I can, get, I can get up into this 90 degrees for only the Lord knows how long. Okay? I can stay here. But I need y'all to get that knee right up here. Right? So when you put this one down, you stretch it out and point it. And when you slide it to your body, you raise the other one. Try it again. Point it. Raise it up. 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 Point. Raise it up. Point and ha. Point and ha. One and two and 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 one and two. That's it. All right. So when you pick it up, that's when. That's when you got it. Now, of course, going from learning speed to real speed right away is not necessarily the best thing for everybody. We're going to play this a little bit more. to say all right so we understand the marching man culture right of the here the historically black college or university at least that it exists we might not know all the ins and outs of it but the history of putting forth the level of showmanship the level of pageantry because this goes all the way back to military marching bands and keeping the beat for the soldiers while they're marching right it goes that far back in terms of marching bands but the and the drum major was responsible for keeping that tempo among other things there were certain commands that they um that they were responsible for and they held um what's called a mace or a baton you know that long stick with the bulb on the end okay so that is a part it's one of the implements it's an implement of that position and of that title. And so the drum major and their relationship with the military marching corps or marching band has been now brought over to the college football game. Okay? The history is details. I'm not going to give a whole lot of details. College football game. The marching band experience overall Oh, great. Excellent. We got a new host. <laughs> the marching band experience okay. overall is, okay, and I'll shift my positioning, is, um, well, I'll stay where I am for now until they finish getting it together. The marching band positioning overall is something that now brings those two elements together. 
there is one experience that connects all, all, all of that, which is in New Orleans. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Funeral processional. Second line. Second line. Oh yeah. The second line. The, the the jazz bands that go through the street with all this fanfare. There's dancing. They got folks. You know, everybody is gathered around and celebrating the life. And I told you we would come back to that. We're not talking about funerals just in a sense of sadness. We're talking about celebrating the life, celebrating those who have been blessed by this new ancestor, this person who is now transitioned and passed on, okay? So celebrating those blessings, <laughs> the blessings that that, that that person has brought while they were living, okay? So there's so much history just in one movement just in one motion, so much culture that's wrapped up just in this. When I first saw it, I was like, oh, that's marching band. I don't even know what these young people is doing, but that's, that's from the marching band. That's a drum major move right there. I know what that is, okay? So that speaks to our culture. That speaks to a thing that keeps us connected. And when we know and understand the roots of a thing, hopefully it can be something that helps us stay more connected to really to each other, all right? So that's just one, all of that for one step, right? Oh, I'm not done, I'm not done, because guess what? There's also a connection directly to Africa, okay? Now, this is the part where I talk about whether a thing is, I said directly, let me scratch that part, because whether a thing is directly linked in terms of a lineage you can trace versus connections that we can see that are more along the lines of ancestral memory. Y'all know what I mean by ancestral memory? Yeah, yeah. Your ancestors went through a thing, did a thing, responded a certain way, created a thing, okay? And you have no idea what that thing was. You don't know what it looked like, what it felt like, what it sounded like. But for some reason, when you hear a particular sound, when you feel a particular beat, when you want to express a certain emotion, you do the same thing that your ancestors did without even knowing why, without even knowing what that connection is. That's ancestral memory. And a lot of what we see inside of hip hop, a lot of what we see in even contemporary Afro beats, those young people don't always know the traditions that are right there on the continent with them as they're creating these new contemporary things, okay? so. There's a lot of ancestral memory that comes in to how we create. There is a cultural aesthetic to how black people move our bodies. There's a cultural aesthetic. And when I say aesthetic, I mean a way in which we find beauty, right? The things that we appreciate as beautiful or feeling good. So that common aesthetic is something that leads our people to do some of the same things no matter what, musically, physically, and, and otherwise, okay? So, <clears throat> not to mention things that are passed down through generations. The kind of music that felt good to your great, 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 great grandmother felt good to your great grandmother, and felt good to your mother, and your mother moved around with you, and you find yourself moving the same way. Every time I walk into my daughter's cheer uh, team group, I do something that makes them say, oh my God, she's just like her. Oh my goodness. We don't notice that we're passing these things along, but we are. It's inside of our mannerisms and how we carry ourselves, all right? So now, we're gonna get to the title track. We're gonna get to what we came for, the gritty, which is not even the bulk of what I wanna share with you all today, clearly. <laughs> because I, could get into this with you all, all day, all day. But we're gonna move again. Who knows how to do the gritty? Y'all know how to get gritty? If you can, that's how to Let me get, let me, let me get a girl something to get y'all inspired, hold on. I tried to find a clean version, y'all. It's not easy, I'll tell you that. Oh, I didn't talk, put the boom up there. It's yeah. doing that thing again where I can't get sound. Oh, look, hi, I'm on the thing. <laughs> I can't get sound again. What happened? What's wrong? Oh, on the thing. 
Oh, what do you need to do? Oh, I yeah. need it to be on the blue side. to make space um, so that the people won't 
get too close, the onlooker, right? There's a different purpose, but it's really interesting how those similar elements are present. Those similar elements are present, all right? But so, uh, yeah. So, Cote d'Ivoire, Saudi. So if you take your feet and just, without touching one to the floor, try this please. Yeah. Go really fast, fast as you can. Mm -hmm. Similar. Faster. <laughs> but similar. Okay? And I'm actually going to keep us in Cote d'Ivoire because the other dance that I want to look at, and we don't have a lot of time, but the other dance that I want us to look at is actually multiple steps and it connects in many different ways to another dance that's from Cote d'Ivoire. Okay? So gritty, oh that was another one I wanted to do. So you can do it like that. You can do it like that. You can dip down, you can turn around, you can do all kinds of things. But now we're gonna go to another one. My daughter just told me about this one. And I was like, the what? She said, get sturdy. Um, uh, yeah. I was like, what is get sturdy? What is that? And she was like, search it up, mommy, search it up. Search it up. So I look at get sturdy, and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna see what these people are talking about. Do you understand that these people are doing a dance from Cote d'Ivoire called Queen Go Wrong? I don't care, you can quote me. You can say it. You can tell somebody that I said it. I don't know where they got it from. I kind of do, because they started doing it in New York. Okay? But I looked at that dance and I said, that's obviously can go wrong. Obviously. And you'll see in a moment what I mean by that, because we're going to go through some of the steps that um, they have it in there. But let's see who in here already knows how to get started. I told y'all, this is not the part that I'm here to teach, teach. This is the part y'all supposed to already have. I tried to find a clean version. Y'all know what that is? Hey. 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 Before I even take you to Cote d'Ivoire, I'm going to take you somewhere else. Play now. <laughs> Other, the other view that I have, and I want to see in my chat who put kid in play. Did anybody? Hey, I don't see. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. So, kid in play. Have you heard kid in play? Okay. When I started doing this, did that ring a bell for you? All right. For my generation that's above me, what is this? Charleston. Charleston. Okay. Charleston, okay? Now, guess what? What is that? 
What's the dance I told you all was going to look at? Ingoron. Ingoron. Ingoron from Cote d'Ivoire. Hold on. I'm telling y'all. This thing. Wait for it. Hey, 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 
We're not done yet. Can I, can I get a few minutes? Can I get a few minutes? Because I know we, we uh, had a couple of difficulties getting started, right? But there's something else that I want to share with you. So we, we touched on hidden flags. You know inside of Get Sturdy, you have this here, right? Where's my camera? I'm always chasing this camera. You know inside of the, um, Get Sturdy, you have this part. You can go down and do it. One, all of those things. Hit and play. Signature part of this dance here was the part where they actually grab one foot yep. and jump and bring the other foot through. Same. Not exactly, but <laughs> it's, you, you can see the connection. And that's what I'm here for. I want us to see that connection. And we're all familiar with these things, but somehow, a lot of times, when you don't talk about it, that connection gets left in the previous generation. It just gets left behind, okay? So, there's another thing that I wanted to share with you all that is connected. Hold on. We have this one. Mm, 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 mm. There it is. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, also inside of you, on. You have a step that kicks. The same way that you're kicking here, and it goes front and back. I didn't break this down because my young folks in here was already with it. But for my folks on the video, on the um, virtual, you want to kick forward while you step back, and you want to kick back while you step forward. Okay? That's part of this third. Right? There's a step inside of Ingoron where you just kick, just like that. There is a moment inside of the Kid and Play video getting funky from 1988 where they go like this. With the kicks and the hops, same type of body language. Okay? I didn't even have to go far. I was like, I gotta research and get ready for this thing. And I found that everything is so together and so connected that I didn't even have to seek out. And it could have just been divine. It could have just been, no, these are the things right here for you. There you go. I love that my life works out that way. Right? But it's all there. So we're gonna do a little bit of Ingoron. Okay, we're gonna take three kicks, and you won't believe how they connect. They connect like this. You go one, two, three. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. What does that look like? We're back into the wall. <laughs> I, I didn't even make it up. I haven't made any of this up. All right. So we're gonna do our three kicks. Every time you kick forward, you hop. When you kick back, you hop. Same thing is true when you get started, right? But it's a little faster. So it's gonna be like one and two and three. Take that same leg, open together, open together, jump. One and two and three. Open together, open together, jump. One and two and three. Open together, open together, jump. One and two and three. Open together, open together, jump. One and two and three. Open together, open together, jump. One and two and three. Open together, open together. Good, we go with the music. Good job. We doing it and go on. I gotta switch it up, technically, but not for real. 
if you can see all these connections. <laughs> Research into the bloodlines of the people who came from Cote d'Ivoire and where they ended up, and where their families and where their descendants ended up. There might be a connection there. I'm asking these questions because we're students here, we're scholars, and what we do in the world of dance doesn't just belong on the dance floor. There's culture in it, there's language in it, there's history in it. It is people, it is human beings, all right? Okay, so. I want you to have those things in mind. So we've done a few movements that are traditional West African movements from Cote d'Ivoire. And by the way, what is in going on? What is it? What is it for? Did that cross anybody's mind? Raise a hand. Did anybody think, okay, well, well, what is that? Well, what, why did you do that? Okay, because we started off talking about the reasons why people dance, what it's for. In folkloric dance, the vast majority of the dances belong to a particular occasion, have a specific purpose, okay? 
Okay? So the Senegal people in Côte d'Ivoire, they do Ngoron, it's the young girls. The young girls are, it's rite of passage time. They're entering their, or experiencing their initiation towards womanhood, towards their adulthood, okay? And so it's a way of demonstrating to the community that these particular group of young girls is ready to take a next step. And if we understand adolescence rites of passage, hopefully, and I don't have time to go a lot of detail into it, but it's basically uh, identifying and acknowledging the time for our young people to no longer be children. It functions in the way that bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah, quinceanera, sweet 16. It functions in a similar way to those, except specific to the culture. So the expectations and responsibilities are culture specific, depending on which one of those celebrations are. But we all know that around 12, 13, you get crazy. <laughs> Point blank, period. And if you don't have anyone to guide you through that, then welcome to America. Ooh. Ooh. I, I'm, I'm gonna be quiet. Okay, but there are <laughs> structured ways in indigenous and uh, ancient societies, there are structured ways to acknowledge that time in life and to help people to move through it. So Ingoron is one of the celebrations around that, okay? So when you see these movements that have the quick feet, that, that have people going through just a lot of different motions with jumping, moving back and forth, uh, 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 uh,
some mics. Let's see if I can move this over so I can be here at the same time. All right. Thank you, Sister Crystalla. Let me open up the chat on here. All right. So yeah, any questions or comments? Anything that is sparked for you? What are you going to take home with you? Please upload yourself doing some of these things as variations. Right? Because next thing you know, it can be viral. You never know. All right. Looking to see if there's any questions in the chat. Comment. Go ahead. Share. It was really good. I'm glad you enjoyed about all the connections between now 1988 <laughs> and the, the past. But what's not really the past because people still do it. So. It's just really, it's just really a different than wait. Um, yeah. Like, because the people in Africa didn't stop doing it, you know, mm -hmm. it's just past is Africa. Yes, oh. definitely. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you guys. You so Thank y'all. Hey everyone, we're saying we're saying good evening to the African dance students from yes. PGCC. Yes. Thank y'all so much. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for allowing us in your space. Um, and thank you all for the very active, wonderful chat, all the encouraging words and comments and connections being made in the chat. We saw you. I uh, do my best to follow. My knees are aching simply from watching. No. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, But this is wonderful, wonderful. Um, Again, um, as, as was said at the beginning, um, Mama Lucina is a scholar par excellence and, um, and you can catch Mama Lucina all throughout the DMV. She also teaches classes at a Dinker Arts Studio in Mount Rainier. Um, and um, we have a question. Actually, Mama Lucina, we have a question. Sure. She's, okay. she's, she's, she's networking. Um, it says, outside of the fast foot work, have you noticed any connection between the JIT and Zauli? I have noticed, but you know what? I'm ashamed to say, I don't know how to JIT. But I see it all the time. I see it all the time. Oh yeah, mm -hmm, that's my sister. So we can clearly, clearly, clearly see. And if you look up, let's, I'm gonna type it in the chat, J-I-T. I don't need to type yeah, it. Yeah, they typed it in. Yeah, type it in your question, mm -hmm. right? So if you look up JIT and Detroit JIT, if you look up that style of dance, that form of dance, you'll see a whole lot of footwork that um, even this one here. In Zauli, you get this, right? Inside of Jit, you have where the arms and the foot have to go here. And I didn't even bring that up from Get Started. This is one of the things that you can do inside of that. So like, again, it's endless. The connections really are endless. It's hard to pare it down and cut away and whittle what you want to actually talk about versus what's really out there and what's available because we really are connected. We really are all one. That's the main point <laughs> here at Black Culture Matters. Yeah. We are what? Now I'm hearing Frankie Beverly in my head. We are one. <laughs> so, um, so we have established that. Um, it is, it is, uh, Macy has asked in the chat, is it, uh -huh. is JIT like Chicago footwork? Very similar. I remember being at Howard and, and meeting my Chicago crew 
and it was um it was actually some fellas from Chicago and they started showing me footwork and I was like that's almost exactly like and if you think about geographically how close Chicago and Detroit are their our dance styles are really similar so yes it's a lot 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 alike um and then what I would add to that is that a similar thing happens geographically in Africa so you will have people who are from you know a place that is 500 miles away or 200 miles away or 10 miles away from another place and their their dances their music their expressions will be super similar and it's connected to that proximity so it's really similar i really had that that sort of eureka experience when i met people from chicago uh, as a teenager it's really similar yep so we want to thank you all again for coming. Uh, Dr. Ichile, I didn't know if you wanted to say a closing yes. thing. Yes. Real, real quick. <laughs> thank you so much for the questions, the comments, the feedback, for your participation and your patience. Um, please join us next month, November 21st. We'll be having the third installment of our Black Culture Matters series, also a hybrid event. Hopefully we will have <laughs> um, uh, uh, an on-time start that will be here in the Center for Performing Arts. We'll be in the atrium and also we'll have a connection between our event and the Africana collection, which is on exhibit in our art gallery here. So um, it'll be film and photography next time with Regine Romaine, and we're really excited about that one as well. But we wanna thank Mama Lucina so much for her time. Uh, our tech guys have pulled up the kid and play getting funky video. Yes. <laughs> um, so it's real, the connections are there. I'm kind of looking at it and I'm like, wow, they're doing in Grown in 1988. Um, but thank you once again, everyone for joining us. We hope to see you next time. Have a good night. Mm-hmm.